Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decisions. Work related, I've been asked to just um, build a sample dashboard in Looker for our sales team uh, using human resources data. Um, so, um, in this video, I'm just going to walk through the build of a simple uh, demo dashboard in Looker. If you're new to Looker, um, you know, if you're a kinesthetic learner like most of us, you're going to learn best by doing. So um, if ever you're, you know, need to learn a new tool such as Looker, uh, go ahead and, and just build something, you know, you don't have an assignment, but make up your own. Um, there's plenty of data off Kaggle. That's what I like to use to get data. Just they give you the data in CSV form. And uh, and then I'm going to take it into BigQuery, uh, manipulate it. Um, you know, turn it into perfect data for Looker to ingest. Um, and um, yeah, Looker will uh, uh, just, you know, be be where I build, you know, a, a dashboard. I'm thinking of building a, an interactive dashboard suite, um, something I've done a couple times before. Uh, basically, you got a home dashboard that pretty much, uh, you know, has the grand scheme of things, everything you want to see on the front page. And then every tile has a, has a has a has a link to a different dashboard uh, for drill down features. So, um, you know, I'm going to build that dashboard for you. Um, so, uh, why don't we just get started? Let me share my screen. So the first thing uh, is Kaggle. Kaggle is where you find data. Um, nice date, nice simple uh, website, just meant to find data. So. Um, you know, here's the home page. I go to data sets. Um, I don't even have a sign in. I can. I do have an account. Why don't I just log in? Uh, with my email. All right, so I logged in. Um, I go to data sets. Um, you know, since I'm looking for human resources data, uh, that's what I'll look for. Um, I think this one's perfect. Um, here's what the table looks like. Wow, it's been looked at a lot. Oh, let's find it. Let's download it right here. Download. There it is. Go to the archive. Let's extract it. It's a zip, so you extract it. Boom. And there it is in my downloads folder. Just a simple CSV. Let's take a look at it. All right, so this is just one table. That's really nice. Makes it easy. Um, we got employee name, employee ID, a married flag, marital status, gender ID, employee status, department ID. So we got um, each row is a person. And there are um, 311 people in this table and it's telling you everything hr wants to know about the people um you know this is most definitely personal information if this were real data this is not real data but um you know this this uh you know when anytime you're dealing with hr data this is all pretty much pii so if this were data, data from your company, uh, you would need to um, secure this uh, using uh, column level security, uh, using row level security, using table level security. This is all stuff that can be done in Looker. Um, I guarantee uh, once I build this for the client, 
or for my for my, for my manager Safana, uh, we're going to have to implement the security into this table because that's a big key factor to selling um, an HR dashboard is the security around it. And uh, Looker is so great with security. Uh, like I said, it has row level, column level, and table level security. It also has dashboard level security. So at pretty much every level you can think of, there's security in Looker that we can manage. And uh, we'll add all of those layers to this at the end. But this is the simple table that we'll be working off of. Uh, not too many rows, about 30 columns. Next step is to take this into BigQuery. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go into GCP. All right, log in. All right, um, I'm just working in app integrations dev. That's um, just um, a sandbox for everyone. First step is to bring this CSV file into cloud storage. So now we're into cloud storage. Um, I have my own folder called Dev Danny. That's where we're going to save. Let's open up that folder. And then let's upload a file. And we're going to go to downloads. We're going to find the folder and plug it in. Um, I, I did do this uh, a little while ago to prepare. Let's just overwrite. All right, now the table is in cloud storage. So the CSV file is officially in the GCP realm. Step one is to bring it into cloud storage. Step two now is to bring it into BigQuery. Let's go ahead and do that. Notice how I don't go change this browser. Um, I open up a new browser and now I'm going to go into BigQuery. So I like to do things in different browsers because that's really the beauty of cloud computing or one of the beauties. Um, the ability to uh, work in sequence, you know, with any data project, it's accretive. It's one after another after another. It's an ordered step of processes. And, uh, you know, within your browser working in the cloud, you can have a browser open for every single step in the process. And at the end of this, I'll put my browser in order of the process of what everything I did today. And I really want you to use that to your helping because that's really how I look at a data project. Accretive is really the key word of it all. And uh, you can show that in your browser by accretively showing every single step in a browser of the project and uh, lets you see the big picture. And uh, unfortunately, it's ephemeral. It, it can't stay. It's just the order of your browser tabs. Um, you can maybe save that as a profile, but I haven't figured that out. Um, but, you know, just wanted to share my thoughts on how I build in the cloud. Um, so now I'm in BigQuery and let's go into the folder of where we'll work. I think I have a Dev Danny folder. I do. So I did this before, I'm gonna do this again. So um, I go into the folder and I say create table. And I'm gonna find the table in Google Cloud Storage. And now we're gonna find it in the bucket, which is in you know cloud storage. So here are the buckets. Uh, let's Dev Danny. Here's the table. Give it a name. Um, always allow it to auto detect. BigQuery does do a good job. 
BigQuery does do a good job of auto detecting. Um, it's easy. So just make sure you click auto detect. That's the only thing I clicked other than entering the table name. All right, there it is. HR data Safana in. Now let's take a look at this table. Uh, do query. Um, just add that star. This is a small table, no need to add limits. Let's check this sucker out. So it looks just like it did in the CSV. Um, it's got the first, uh, it picked up the first row as column names and now those are the column names. They all look great, no need to change those. Um, It's got 311 uh, rows. If we go to the CSV file, we should see 312. So the first row is the headers and then 311 rows. That's what you see right here. All the fields look awesome. The auto detection worked, detection worked perfectly. So that's great. All right, so there's not much that needs to be done with this table, um, but um, we certainly want to give ourselves the chance to make adjustments. I think um, as I'm building this, I'm going to go into BigQuery all the time to make um, manipulation to the data. Um, I'm never going to want to do that in Looker. I don't believe in that. I believe in um, always doing all data transformations in the database and just making looker um, just a simple dashboarding tool not a a data munging tool um, so we're going to do it all in, in bigquery but as of now i don't have much to do but i want to give myself the room to do that so watch what i do i, I have this input table hr data safana so i have the input data which is called hr data safana n that's the first query right here. And, and um, you know, what I wanna do right now is create a circuit of tables for future data manipulation. I don't want this to be the final table because then that's, that leaves me stuck with, with the table as is. I wanna make changes to it. So um, just copy and paste this code in uh, and let me explain this. So. This is um, this is the final table right here, HR data Safana out. Um, that name will never change. Um, that will be the final table of what Looker ingests. And uh, in between is um, an interim table, which has the, the name HR data Safana one. So um, right now we got a circuit of three tables. It starts with HR data, data Safana in. The first data manipulation of uh, the table is going to be called HR Data Safana 1. And uh, that's built off of the input table right here. And then the output table is always just going to be built off of the final interim table, which at this case is number two. So uh, when, I've, when I do make my first data transformations, instead of this being just a simple select all to create the first interim table, um, I will add SQL to do the transformation I need to make, uh, you know, whether table map or column mappings, whether I need to, you know, change uh, the, the, the formats of the, of the fields, uh, whether um, I need to, I know I need to um, make the dates kind of move to towards the future. So find the last date in the table, find the difference between that date and today, and then add that difference to every single date value so that the data looks like it's present. I will do that. So there's a lot to do. I won't do it right now, but right now I'm just showing you, uh, this is always what you wanna do when you kinda start your, your uh, project. Uh, you wanna create a circuit of tables. You don't wanna leave yourself stuck with the input table being the final table. You wanna explicitly make an output table. And then in before that, you wanna have interim tables that do all the data manipulation. Um, another thing you wanna keep in mind is these are all views. That's really beautiful. Views are great because you never have to schedule a view. View is just um, 
a stored query and on the fly whenever that view gets called it's going to generate it on the fly so right now we have a chain of views so this is the table the first table is a table but everything thereafter is a view so anytime you um, run a query on this it's going to first generate this query and and then this query is going to be generated from this table um, so everything is going to be coming on the fly now this is a very small table the the table is only 311 rows so you could totally get away with having everything being done on the fly when you're working with very very large tables such as like over 100 million rows well you really don't want to have views because you don't want everything to be generated on the fly because that would take up a lot of processing you'd want to front load the processing by scheduling your tables and um, on a regular basis so that for the end user when they pull up their their tiles and looker uh, the processing of those dashboards are very quick because they're not having to go all the way to the beginning to to recreate everything um, like you would with a view. So uh, just know the difference of when to use a view, when to use a table. When we're working with small data, always use just all views. That saves you the time of having to schedule this and, and refresh it. Um, you don't have to worry about that. All you got to do is just save the query and, and, and it will schedule it will schedule itself, or not schedule, but refresh itself every time uh, a dashboard gets called in Looker.